Oh my. <laughs> I look around this room and I am overwhelmed with one thought. Where have you been? <laughs> oh, I've missed you. It is so wonderful to see everybody here. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a stilted worship service. We have to do this the way the uh, smart people have told us to, and so we won't do responsive things like say good morning to each other, and uh, we won't uh, do responsive things like uh, he is risen, he is risen indeed, but he is risen indeed. And uh, what a joyful Easter this is. Let me explain a couple of things about our worship service today. The first thing you need to be aware of is that you are on camera. We are recording this worship service live, and then it will be shown later, like the old Johnny Carson show was. <laughs> and so you'll see there's a camera right up there, and that is uh, going to... Uh, uh, send the signal to our control room and uh, Roger is back there pressing the buttons that need to happen and uh, after the worship service that will be posted uh, on uh, YouTube and Facebook and the website and everywhere else so if you're here with someone you shouldn't be with you might want to uh, leave but that's not the case uh, also, you'll see we don't have any hymns in the worship service itself because we just can't sing. Uh, even singing quietly with masks on really does spread our voice out very far. And uh, so uh, what we are going to do, which I think is going to be beautiful and is going to be fun, and you notice there's an electric piano uh, that is uh, out in front, and so on, in your bulletins, the last pages of your bulletins are the hymns for today. And so when you get to your cars, you can stand outside your cars, you can sit in your cars, however you choose to do it. Kay's going to go out there. She's going to crank that piano uh, way up and uh, we're going to sing the hymns together in the parking lot. And uh, I've, I've, I'm jealous of our neighbors who are uh, in the neighborhood and are going to hear that. And it's just going to be such a beautiful thing. And uh, so this is, this is just so wonderful that we can do this. Uh, communion two is going to be just a little bit different than we're used to. Uh, and that is that the ushers will, uh, an usher will come and ask you to come up. We can't line up for communion. Uh, and uh, uh, Albertsons didn't have any of those red things on the floor that they could loan us that says to stay here. So you'll come up uh, as the ushers invite you to uh, and you'll be served here. And what we have to do is this, the uh, individual uh, wine and juice that's in uh, the little uh, cups are spaced in the tray far enough that you should be able to reach it and, and get your own. Um, we have to try to keep cross-contamination down as much as possible. Um, and when you get your wafer, what we'll ask you to do, and you get your wafer first and then your juice, if you would hold your cup, your hands like this as best you can so that the wafer can be dropped in because we just can't touch your skin. So we'll try to do that. And then uh, you can uh, uh, have the elements and then as you leave, you can set your uh, uh, empty cup in one of these baskets that's, that's right here. Uh, if, uh, if this goes according to plan, it will be the first time in the history of this congregation that that's ever happened. Uh, we tend to usually end up with plan C or D, and so likely that's going to happen too. We're going to just do the best we can. But uh, what a joy that God has gathered us here. And so we're going to uh, enjoy being gathered by God. And we begin on Easter, as is our tradition, with the thanksgiving for baptism. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. 
We thank you, risen Christ, for the waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God now and forever. Amen. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. I know you can't respond back, but I'm going to tell you all Happy Easter. Our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth for the Lord, Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Our psalm reading comes from Psalm 11 today. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Our second reading today comes from Acts chapter 10. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. 
That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen as God's witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as a judge of the living and of the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Yes, please rise as you are able. Thank you. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed for as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead then the disciples returned to their homes but mary stood weeping outside the tomb as she wept she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet they said to her Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that, she, that he had said these things to her. Please be seated. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. These should be fairly easy questions for you to answer. Please don't answer them out, out loud. Um, do you love Jesus? Do you embrace Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I hope you answered yes to both of those questions. 
Because that confession, those two confessions are the entry into the kingdom of God, the entry into the Christian life, what John's gospel calls eternal life. But I want you to imagine something for just a minute. I want you to imagine that you've gathered your children together when they were younger and you set off to Disneyland and you walk through that turnstile at Disneyland and then you just stood there and you took in everything. You took in the sights and the sounds and the lights and the colors and the smell, but you went no further. I want you to imagine a similar trip. You've loaded your family into the car. You've driven across the country to see Yellowstone. And you got to that sign that said Yellowstone National Park. And your family lined up in front of that. And you asked somebody to take your picture because it never occurred to anyone then that you could take your own picture. And then you told the kids to get back in the car and you drove back home. And that's as far in to Yellowstone as you went. Loving Jesus. Embracing Jesus as your Lord and Savior is awesome. But it is just the entryway to the kingdom of God. It is the gate into the Christian life. And let me show you what I mean. We read today about this woman, Mary Magdalene. Magdalene, by the way, is not her last name. All right, Calling her Magdalene is like calling me Steve Wisconsinite. It really should say Mary of Magdala or Mary the Magdalene uh, because she is from a village that was on the shore of uh, the Sea of Galilee called Magdala. But Mary the Magdalene loved Jesus. She was one of the few disciples who were standing near the cross on that Friday when Jesus said it is finished and then bowed his head. Mary was there. And now she is at his tomb. We're told it's early. We're told it's still dark. This is telling us that Mary loved him so much that she went out when it was dangerous. Dark was danger. You remember this when you were kids? When you were in junior high and you asked your parents, tomorrow after school, can I go over to my friend's house? And of course your mom said, yes, as long as you don't dare come home until it's dark. She said, come home before it's dark. Dark is dangerous. And yet Mary loves Jesus so much, she's going through that danger so that she can mourn Jesus at his tomb. And she's been waiting to do this. The day before was the Sabbath. She couldn't go. He died on Friday. Saturday was the Sabbath. She couldn't go to the tomb. This is her first opportunity to be to the tomb, to mourn Jesus, and she's not waiting for the sun to come up to do it. That's how much she loved Jesus. And it is great that she loved Jesus. But we need to remember that Jesus made promises to her. Jesus made promises to all the disciples, to us that we read about, to die and to rise again and to ascend. And yet these promises were so big that even Mary Magdalene could not believe them. If Mary had believed these promises of Jesus, then that Saturday would have been very different for her. If she had really believed the promises that Jesus had made to her, then on that Sabbath, she would have been like a child on Christmas Day, filled with joy. I'm sorry, Christmas Eve, filled with joy and with wonder and anticipation 
and imagination, but she wasn't. Instead, that was a mournful day of weeping for her. And on this day, she's weeping again. Pardon me. <clears throat> she's weeping again on this day because she sees the tomb empty. And she's wondering who has done this thing. Who has taken Jesus' body away? Seeing a man that she assumes is the gardener, she says, if you have done this, please tell me where you have taken him. And then we see Jesus do something that he rarely ever does. Throughout all of the Gospels, Jesus rarely does this. He called somebody by name. We don't see that happen very often. But every time we see Jesus call somebody by name, it is a moment of transformation for that person. Remember when Jesus went to, uh, to see his friend who had died, his friend Lazarus, and he got there late and Lazarus had already died. He was smelling with decomposition in his tomb. And Jesus called him by name and said, Lazarus, come out. Jesus rarely called people by name. But when he did, it was an important moment in their lives. And he called Mary by name. And she recognizes Jesus. You see, John in his gospel uses seeing as a metaphor for belief. The blind do not believe. Those who see, believe. And Mary sees Jesus. But notice that she doesn't call Jesus Lord. Doesn't call Jesus her Savior. He, she calls Jesus Rabboni, Rabbi, Teacher. She calls Jesus with a name that invokes their relationship. He is the rabbi. She is the disciple. You are my rabbi, she's saying. It's about relationship. This whole thing is, Jesus then says to her, how does he describe the other disciples? Go tell my brothers. This risen Jesus is responding to people, talking to people in relationship ship so much so that he says tell them that i go to my father and your father and that's an amazing thing remember what peter had just done denying jesus denying knowing jesus peter had severed his ties with jesus in his denial and in his death and resurrection, Jesus undid that. The risen Lord called him his brother. Mary refused to trust the promises that Jesus had made to her. And the risen Jesus called her by name into relationship. Sisters and brothers, what worse thing could we possibly do than what Peter and Mary had done to Jesus? In fact, we deny Jesus. When we say and do things that we then need to confess for having done. We deny Jesus when we say and do things that we know Jesus would not have us say and do. And we fail to believe Jesus' promise. When we think we or our loved ones would have gone to heaven anyway. My grandma was 
a saintly woman. She was the greatest woman that ever lived. Surely she would have gone to heaven even without Jesus. We sometimes slip in to that way of thinking. But Jesus doesn't say, okay, you're on your own, you do it. That's not what Jesus does. And so we confess with humility and we confess with boldness because Jesus is doing for us something we cannot do for ourselves. We live our entire lives in Mary's Saturday. Our entire lives are lived in this time of wonder and anticipation and imagination. As we live in this Saturday and we've had our share of mourning and fear and weeping so much so in this past year we live our lives in Mary's Saturday and we are called to live it with joy in trusting and believing that Jesus is going to keep the promises that he made that he made to Mary and that he made to Peter and that he made to all the disciples and that he has made to us that's why we are here Mary saw the risen Jesus and Jesus said, blessed are those who come to believe, but yet don't see. That's us. We don't get to see the risen Jesus. The way that Mary did. The way that the disciples will later on. We don't get to see that, but blessed are we who believe anyway. And we believe because of Mary's testimony. We believe because Mary said, I have seen the Lord. This woman, Mary, is the first preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Mary. And like Mary, you and I have been saved by Jesus. It has already happened. It doesn't wait for us. The promise has already been fulfilled. It's already happened. Keep in mind, Jesus was risen on the first day of the week. So we can live our lives in this first day. We can live our lives in a world in which Jesus has risen. We don't have to live in Mary's Saturday. But we're told Jesus isn't done yet. Jesus has more to do. The promise continues. It continues to Jesus' ascension and beyond. It continues on to that time when Jesus has promised to come for each one of us and call us by name and take us to the place he has prepared for us. The good news of this day isn't merely that the tomb is empty. The good news is that Jesus Christ is risen today. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
you might not be able to tell. Would you, would you hold that up, Bob? His horn is wearing a mask. He calls it a diaper. Which makes me wonder, what does he use his horn for? Thank you guys, that's so wonderful. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, now we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Praise to you for your power revealed in the resurrection. Fill your church with the power of your love that is stronger than death. Send us to tell the good news wherever death holds sway. Praise to you for your life at work in the resurrection. Fill all of creation with your life. Bring it to blossom and flourish. Use it to remind us of your persistent grace. Cultivate our care for what you have made. Praise to you for the peace made possible in the resurrection. Fill the nations with your peace. Draw together people of all nations and languages. Reveal new possibilities and inspire new beginnings. Praise to you for the hope of the resurrection. Fill all in need with hope. Those who are afraid or confused. Those who are sick or suffering. Those who are dying and those who grieve. Assure them of your promises. Praise to you for the joy of your resurrection. Fill this assembly with joy as we are called your beloved in baptism. Multiply that joy so that we share it at home and at work and in our communities. Praise to you for your faithfulness revealed in the resurrection. Fill us with trust that we join with all who have gone before us in proclaiming your mercy endures forever. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've got to try to figure out how this is going to work. Let's see if you can hear me under here. Forceps nurse. Our offering prayer. Be known to us, O Lord, in the breaking of the bread, as you were made known to the disciples. Receive these gifts and offerings of our lives that we may be your risen body in the world. Amen. It is right in our joy at all times and in our places to give thanks and praise to you, our mighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who sharing your, our life, lived among us to reveal your glory and love that our darkness should give way to your own brilliant light. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, and he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this, for the remembrance of me. And again after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, 
and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Now let us feast this Easter day on Christ, the bread of heaven. Hallelujah. After we have served, if you would like to be served where you're sitting, stay where you're at, and then raise your hand, and we'll come around.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of heaven to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to Jesus' resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world through the same Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now, may God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. You are the body of Christ raised for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Amen.